This skeleton belonged to a man who donated his body to science. Now students inspect the skeleton after digging it up from a wooded field at Western Carolina University near the Great Smoky Mountains. I've always thought about working at the Smithsonian. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want to do, but definitely somewhere along the lines of a professor or a crime scene investigator. I'm trying to go to med school, so this is a good, you know, everybody goes like bio or chemistry, so this is a good way to have that hands-on experience with a cadaver before you even get to med school. So I'd love to be like a chief medical examiner. Now, we're not gonna take you inside out of respect for the recently deceased. There are about 20 people inside there. Some of them have been there for years now. We also witnessed three recently deceased men. Now they are placed here in the woods and since they've just been recently put there, they are in fresh stages of decomposition. While we won't show you the bodies, we will show you the care these students took in taking precise measurements. Somebody can decompose quickly over a year or can take a long time, two, three years. The science isn't trying to find out just how fast that can happen, so that way forensic investigators can find out when potentially a murder victim was actually placed in a field. Best reasons to create more of these similar facilities to kind of better capture these environmental differences, as well as the differences not just in terms of like temperature and humidity, but also the different types of animals that are living in these areas that may be scavenging bodies. Whether inside a lab or in the field, there is a certain reverence and respect among the students and professionals studying the bodies of those mostly older people who donated themselves to science. So for pre-donors, I'd like them to know that they're treated with the utmost respect and that their generous gift is something that can be used for many generations. There are seven body farms nationwide. Virginia's George Mason University will be the eighth. A fence surrounds this Manassas field, protecting it from prying eyes and some scavenging animals. As of a few weeks ago, several human bodies lay out in the open of this wooded area. So many times cases have just gone unresolved for years, um, multiple years, and the families never know what happened. And we can't explain it because we don't know what happened. And so the more information that we're able to develop here, the more we can understand an outdoor homicide scene and what happens. Joining famed former FBI profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole is Anthony Falsetti. After years spent in Bosnia digging up war crimes and mass graves, he joined O'Toole to create the first body farm in the mid-Atlantic region. This is an opportunity to participate in transformative science. In addition to its cutting-edge lab equipment creating virtual reality crime scene measurements, what makes George Mason unique out of the several body farms nationwide is its D.C. area location. We are right on the edge of the federal state governments, um, the military, so we have the opportunity to collaborate with all of those different agencies. Through the years, these fields will see dozens, maybe hundreds of people laid to rest, but none of them will be buried, and that rest will be intentionally and purposefully interrupted by the curiosity of students determined to help bring answers to the families of the missing and murdered. In Coloe, North Carolina, and Manassas, Virginia, Nathan Baca, WUSA 9.